Good morning. My name's John Gilkison, and uh, my video logs don't really have a name, you know, like uh, fully charged or transport evolved or anything like that because I not only do videos on electric cars and the like, but uh, almost any subject that uh, suits me, really. If, if I have an interest in it and I want to do a video on it, I do it. So I haven't, haven't named this uh, video log that I've been doing yet. Um, just the other day, um, I posted a new, uh, uh, blog on evworld.com. Uh, the title of it is, um, um, the first rule of holes. <laughs> Sorry, I was drawing a blank there. First rule of holes. Um. And the uh, first rule of holes, of course, is stop digging. But in the example of uh, climate change, um, we need to stop digging so fast first on our way to stop digging. So that was the thrust of my blog. And um, the thing that uh, <clears throat> I spurred me into action to, to write a blog about it was I've uh, been watching videos by uh, an auto autoexperts.com which is John Cadogan out of uh, Australia and uh, the videos have been quite good uh, I've really enjoyed some of them he, he gets into technical things about uh, engines and various things that have to do with automobiles. But he's done some more general ones. Uh, he did one on um, um, Tesla, which he titled uh, his Tesla cult, which his conclusion was that it was. And uh, the main thrust of, of his blogging is, is he deals with science and facts and so forth and and I'm very pleased to see that in any video blogger, but uh, in this instance, he ventured off into fossil fuels and the internal combustion engine, and he just doesn't think that uh, electric cars <coughs> are ever going to amount to anything. And I think at this juncture, he ventured over the line from objective facts into subjective uh, conjecture. Um, which I'm doing quite frankly when I say that I think uh, electric cars are going to take over the marketplace and going to take off. And, uh, and I think they will for a number of reasons, which I think someone fully embedded in the um, uh, petrol car marketplace, someone who's a, a real expert at it, may be a little biased. Um, and he may not be paying close attention to some of the developments that, that are going on. The biggest problems electric cars have, in my estimation, at this current time, is the energy density of the battery packs. And right now, we're somewhere around... 12 pounds per kilowatt hour, some, something in that neighborhood, maybe a little less. And the original goal of Edison and Ford way back in 1916 to make an electric car, they wanted to develop a battery pack that would uh, develop, uh, uh, would be capable of 55 pounds of battery pack per horsepower hour. And that's, that's what I meant to say. I think it, in the present day we're somewhere around 12 pounds per horsepower hour that's what I'm getting at and uh, it's uh, the energy density of uh, lithium-ion batteries have went up 10 or 20 percent in the last uh, um, several years and there's room for them to develop a little more uh, barring any new technologies 
So that's one thing. But the energy efficiency of an electric engine is just startling when compared to an internal combustion engine. It's on a factor of three to four times more energy efficient. And you, not only that, but you get rid of the transmission and uh, so many ancillaries, so many moving parts that uh, the simplicity of them is just incredible. So their durability, uh, they're probably electric cars are going to last far longer than most internal combustion engine vehicles can and um, just the brakes alone for example because of regenerative braking you don't wear out brakes so anyway there's more to it than that though um, a lot of people also say well we're you know the energy density of fossil fuels is so great that uh, renewables can't take over for it and and you know we'd need an incredible amount of uh, of solar panels and wind turbines, we just have to cover the planet with them. And, and they don't really quite know what they're talking about because, number one, let's say we switch to electric cars. Um, currently, we can drive a lot of electric cars just on off peak power because we have a lot of idle generating capacity just sitting around at night doing nothing. So it's going to be a long time before we get to a point where um, we need extra generating capacity. Now, the problem with renewables is storage. Uh, they generate power when they generate power. And if you, if you take over the grid with the renewables, you, you have to have power in times when uh, the sun ain't shining and the wind ain't blowing. And this is where storage comes in. And electric cars represent just vast amounts of storage for the grid. This is this V2 to grid thing. So, um, I mean, let's say I owned a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack Chevy Bolt. I don't use over, let's say, 27 kilowatt hours a day in my house and with the solar panels during the day of course I'm covering most of the daytime generating needs and um, so I really only need storage for night and cloudy days and so forth when I'm not doing as much a, a 14 kilowatt hour battery pack would cover a great deal of my needs which is what Tesla offered to sell me recently um, 14.7, I think it was. However, if you can imagine having a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack standing by, uh, your car plugged into it, um, you'd have no trouble powering your house in those uh, other moments, as long as you had enough solar to cover more than your needs in the first place. And in my case, it's 120 percent. Um, so, but that's just me. But the grid in sum total, if you have millions of electric cars out there with, uh, let's say, just 10 kilowatt hours of electric car battery capacity that's uh, ready to go to supply the grid when the grid needs extra power. And uh, there has to be an arbitrage situation set up so that uh, um, the grid pays you a really decent amount for this power and replaces that power at a cheaper amount so you benefit from it. In other words, you can't lose money in the transaction. It's uh, the, the grid uh, is a variable proposition on how much it costs to generate electricity depending on the time of day and when, when you need it. And you have to have this power instantaneously and that's what batteries are really good for. Uh, so I think many of the pundits, the fossil fuel pundits and so forth, are way off base because they only see what is. They see the way things are now. They know how the world works right now, and that's the way they see it. They're kind of in the position of someone who's living in 1890, and they know how the world works too, and it's horse and buggies. And these newfangled internal combustion engines ain't ever going to amount to a hill of beans. That's just the way it is. They know that. Well, they're wrong, because no one knows what tomorrow will bring, and 
And the handwriting's already on the wall, a lot of this. The technologies have been developed, and the marketplace is driving it. And this is why solar and wind are taking over. Uh, it's pushed coal out, and it's getting ready to push natural gas out of the generating markets because solar and wind are cheaper. It's just a matter of storing power for the times that we need it when we can't generate with renewables. That's what we call getting rid of spinning reserve. And uh, that's, uh, that's coming with V2 to grid and other battery storage, these uh, uh, megawatt hour battery packs that Tesla's building for Australia, for example, and they're building them for California. They're coming. So I'll tell you what, the other day I seen a um, um, a railroad train headed north. Where we live, we live on a hill out here, and then down below us is the Rio Grande, and on the other side of the river is the railroad tracks headed north towards Albuquerque. And trains come through here all the time, and I was out doing tractor work, and I heard a train, and I looked up, and here was a train headed north, all flat cars. Dozens and dozens of turbine blades for windmills, for wind turbines, on on this train. Uh, now I didn't have my camera with me, or I'd have taken a picture of it because I've never seen that before. And that's a very encouraging thing for a greenie like me to see. So, and I'll wear the label proudly. I don't think I'm a pie in the sky greenie at all. Uh, physical facts override. Uh, even the wet dreams of the fossil fuel crowd. And uh, right now I'm driving half of my driving, one half to two thirds of my driving is done with the car right behind me. I'm leaning against it. And it's a PHEV and two thirds of that driving, up to two thirds of that driving is done on sunshine. And you see the, the, the charger over there plugged into the wall, hanging on the wall over there. Um, the solar panels are outside about 100 feet away. And uh, I use about a couple kilo, couple hundred kilowatt hours a month and up to two thirds of my driving's all carbon free. And not only that, it's just cheaper. And that's the reason horse and buggies went by the wayside. Once internal combustion engine cars matured, uh, it was one half the cost to drive as it was to maintain a horse and buggy. And that's what we're looking at right now. You, if you own an electric car, it's at least one half the cost to drive it. It's, it's hard to figure. They don't need as much maintenance. And when the price of electric cars comes down a little more, the price of batteries is right now is somewhere be slightly below $200 a kilowatt hour for batteries. Once it reaches about 125, electric cars uh, are going to be equivalent to uh, uh, petrol cars in price on the showroom floor for equivalent cars. And they're just way better. They, no transmission, they, they accelerate better, they're quieter. They're, uh, we need more charging infrastructure, obviously, but for most of your driving, 95% of your driving, unless you're taking trips, an electric car is just fine, especially if it has a couple hundred miles of range or more. Not a problem. So, I'm sorry, it's coming. Go see my blog. Uh, read my blog on evworld.com, and it'll explain more what I'm trying to get at in this video. Uh, so, there you have it. Uh, first rule of holes. It's not only stop digging, stop digging so fast. Shovels up, everybody. Slow down your digging pace. So, we'll see you on down the road. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.